new has come. For in due season we shall reap. We are in a new season. Hallelujah. We are in a new season. We are not entering into a new season, but we already have entered into a new season. So we have to be led, guide, and instructed by the Spirit of God where to go, how to reach the masses. Hallelujah. Because we have work to do, saints. We have work to do hallelujah oh hallelujah for we shall reap the benefits of the lord we shall reap every blessing of the lord we shall reap oh god every good word has been spoken over my life every good word has been spoken over your life every good word has been spoken over our life every good word has been spoken and over kingdom life temple of deliverance shall come to pass hallelujah if we faint not hallelujah stay connected with KLT by sending a text message to 833-338-9693 to receive KLT updates and events our Kingdom Connect Wednesday takes place this Wednesday with prayer at 7.30 p.m. followed by our Bible study at 8 p.m. On this Wednesday, we will be having evangelism highlights with Evangelist Grace. Please come on out for this interactive session. The first church anniversary takes place Sunday, September 1st and the 8th. Service begins at 3 p.m. The theme the year of increase, enlarge and take over. The speakers are Pastor Jamal Brantley and Bishop-elect Thomas Cooper. It's that time again for our evangelism outreach, taking place on Saturday, September 14th, beginning at 1 p.m. The outreach location will be right here at Kingdom Life Temple of Deliverance, located at 61 Main Street, Patterson, New Jersey, zip code 07505. Come on out to help spread the good news of Jesus Christ as we build the kingdom of God. Volunteers, volunteers, volunteers needed. The church is seeking volunteers to be a part of the greatest team, praise and worship team, Christian education teachers, hospitality team, sight and sound team, executive staff to the senior pastor and the Kingdom Life International Fellowship, security and adjutancy corps, community development team. If interested, please complete the form to become a member at the website www.kltofdeliverance.com. Please follow Kingdom Life Temple of Deliverance on Facebook YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, or on our website at www.kltofdeliverance.com. Changing lives for the better through Jesus Christ. Thank God for this day. This is not just any day, but this is our first church anniversary of the Kingdom of Life. to Passaic County here yeah. in Patterson. Amen. Amen. We thank God for all of the members uh, all the way from Franklin that were there, a part of that service, and how they have traveled here. Yeah. And we're so excited to be here at this location. So we thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. I'm not doubting, by the way. Oh, oh, oh.
the breach of court again. Unless you say, yeah. you turn to go on the field, like I said, three, and then they come to Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm delighted to be here. Amen. Amen. And to be a part of this fellowship. Mm-hmm. I just celebrate one year in ministry. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. It's not easy to make it two months. I guess it may get you one year. Yes. Amen. And I'm so grateful for Almighty God. I've been all my life in the church. Hallelujah. I know it's not easy. Yeah. Amen. But Amen. I certainly thank God. Amen. The Lord is raising up young men and women. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I preach the gospel. But it's gospel of the kingdom must be preached. Yes. Yes. Yeah, for part of this work. Yes. The end shall come. Yes. Amen. The Holy Ghost men are no need to carry the gospel along. Yeah. The standard for the truth, my dear brother. Yes. The Lord is the benefit of it. Amen. And I certainly thank God. Amen. That the Lord is leading you in this direction. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord take you from Franklin to be here. Amen. I promise. Amen. And I believe. Is it the leader of the Lord? Yes. Amen. I believe it's part of God's place. Yes. And so will be born in this place. Amen. Because it is of the Lord. Amen. God bless you as you continue. Mm-hmm. And may the Lord strengthen you and mm-hmm. keep you. And if you continue to preach His word, that He will return in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So much for those testimonies and those words that you all had. And at this time, uh, we're about to move into our ministry of giving. And we know that God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. I see my in laws walking in. God bless the four watching. I say you understand at this time, as we have our KLT Ministry of Giving Confession, uh, you will repeat after me, everybody standing at this time. And you will repeat after me. I am a giver and I am glad about it. I am a giver and I am glad about it. Because I am a giver. Because I am a giver. I expect increase. I expect increase. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Holy Spirit, grant unto me. Holy Spirit, grant unto me. Increase in every area of my life. Increase in every area of my life. Promotions. Promotions. Rebates. Rebates. Refunds. Refunds. Money in the mail. Money in the mail. Unexpected checks. Unexpected checks. And prosperity. And prosperity. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. God is talking to someone about me. God is talking to someone about me. And giving me uncommon favor. And giving me uncommon favor. With uncommon people. With uncommon people and uncommon places. And uncommon places. Lord, right now. Lord, right now. As I cheerfully give, open the windows of heaven. Open the windows of heaven. And pour out a blessing. And pour out a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive. That there shall not be room enough to receive. It is well. It is so. It is so. Amen. Amen. And while you're yet standing, we'll be in the hands of our pastor, Jamal Brantley. Immediately after that, we will receive your time of your giving of your offerings and your tithes, cheerful giving. And immediately after that, you will exit from the back to the front and you may deposit your gift in the basket. Amen. 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 I want every person that can to get your best gift and let's be a blessing to 
the house of the Lord. What you have been given, I want to pronounce a blessing over you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you today for your people who have come in to be a blessing to your house. I pray that you will give it back to them 30, 60, and 100 fold. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for this first church anniversary, for this leader, and for these nine people that are gathered here on today. Now, Father, we thank you that you will bless them to give it back to them 30, 60, and 100 fold. Give it back to them good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over shall many to their bosoms, and we give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray, and every person said, Amen. You are in the hands of, uh, you will come from the back of the rear of the sanctuary, and so you're seated at this time. God bless you. This time is time for the priest's word. Amen. Pastor Brantley, a radical praiser. An innovative thinker, a passionate preacher. These are just a few adjectives to describe Elder Jamal A. Brantley. He is considered as one of the most prolific voices of his generation. Born April 19th in Brooklyn, New York, Elder Brantley excelled in his primary and secondary education, followed by study at Nyack College in New York. At the tender age of six, he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his savior, and his passion for music and ministry began to grow. In October 2002, Elder Brantley joined in fellowship with Zion Tabernacle in Brooklyn, New York. Hallelujah. Elder Brantley accepted the call of ministry through preaching of the gospel at age 16. It was at Mount at Mount at Zion Tabernacle under the leadership of Bishop Charles P. Watts Jr. Yeah. that he was licensed as a minister and later ordained as an elder. Hallelujah. Presently, he is a member of Bethlehem Judah Christian Fellowship Church of God in Christ in Elizabeth, New Jersey under the leadership of Bishop Anthony W. Gilliard. In addition, he serves as youth and young adult pastor at Mariah City AME Church in Cambria Heights, New York, where Reverend Robert Lowe is senior pastor. Besides ministry, Elder Brantley's greatest love is his family. He is the proud son of the late Mr. Freeman and Mrs. Sabrina Brantley, yeah. the brother of Crystal Brantley and uncle to his nephew, Kingston Josiah Brantley. Elder Brantley is an itinerant evangelist, regularly traveling the country, sharing a fiery message of faith and conviction. In 2016, he founded the 007 Conference to empower the body of Christ. As the conference grew, the Lord placed it on Elder Brantley's heart to rename the conference the Kingdom Agents Gathering to mobilize as agents of change to fulfill the kingdom agenda. This time I ask everyone to please stand at this time as we present to some and introduce to others our pastor, Jamal Brantley. And the Lord use you in the mighty name. Honor and praise God for your amazing pastor. Let's give God praise for Pastor Jason. You can on today. Come on, let's give God praise again. Amen. We honor his wife. Amen. God bless you. To all of the amazing members that are here. Amen. Will you do me a favor? Clap your hands with my pastor, Bishop Anthony W. Gilliard. Amen. And to our staff that is here, Sister Diana. Amen. Minister Fields. Amen. And to uh, Minister Christian on organ. Very quickly, you may be seated. I'm going to ask Sister Diana to come and just give us something uh, to bless us musically. And I will be right back to give you the word of the Lord. Amen. Cut your hands, Sister Dion, as she comes at this time. Oh, yeah. 
somebody and said, neighbor, where we are today, we've got to take the city by force. Uh, brothers and sisters, it is amazing that we have come to this time of this celebration of one year of church anniversary. Many times when people begin to talk about church anniversary, it is actually to celebrate where God has brought you from. It is also a time where we'll be able to also realize that we have something to look forward to. One of the challenges that I think in church sometimes is that we'll get so comfortable with where we are that we don't like to look forward. But every now and again, you need to look unto God and understand that where you are is good, but where you're going is so much better. Just look at somebody and say, I'm going somewhere better. I'm going. The challenge is, Diana, is that when we study our text today, we are talking about the Israelites. We understand the backstory is very simple. The Bible talks about, of course, the Israelites have made an exit out of Egypt with an understanding that if God has given you an exit, he has already made an entrance. And so he makes this an understanding. He tells Moses, I want you to lead my people out of Egypt to a land that I've already promised them. There is a promised land. And brothers and sisters, this land that God has promised them, he makes it clear that it will flow with milk and honey. In other words, that this must be a good land. But one of the things I find, Pastor, is that in this particular time, you also realize that the plan or the place that God has them to go is already inhabited. In other words, there are people already there. Someone said they're already there. There are people there. There are the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, and all of these ites are sitting up in the land that God has for them. But when you look at the text, you must also understand that Joshua here is also one of the individuals who God has allowed to be a part of the army. And what happens is there comes a time where there are spies sent into the land to look and to see if what God has said about the land is exactly what it is. The Bible says that Joshua, the book said, and Caleb and some of the men, one man from every tribe, went and looked at the land. And the Bible says they brought back uh, what we would like to call evidence of what was there. The Bible said they brought the grapes and they showed all of the good things 
things that were with the land. But one of the things that I love about the text is that the Bible declares that in that right moment it says that they said that Caleb opened up his mouth and said, let us go up at once for we are well enough able to possess it. Brothers and sisters, you have to be very careful because every time there is somebody who's willing to possess, there's always somebody who's willing to say we can't do it. The Bible says that there were others who said, well, the giants are there and we look like grasshoppers not only in our sight but in their sight. I got a problem with the text minister field because the scripture said that that's what they thought about themselves. The people did not say that but they thought that about themselves and I want to tell everyone in this room that may be watching online, stop making yourself smaller than what you think because just because it doesn't have a lot of people does not mean that it cannot work. The Bible said one could chase a thousand and two could put ten thousand to flight. Do me a favor. Give your neighbor a high five and say we're well able. Oh, we're well able. It's not that because it's not a lot of us does not mean that the job cannot get done. And so there are people who say that it's impossible to get this land. But the Bible says that Joshua is one of the people. And it is amazing because as the story continues to progress, we understand Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And around Deuteronomy you will find, brothers and sisters, that God makes it clear to Moses he's not going to go to the land. He says, I know you're not going to go to the land, but there was a time, a pastor, where the scripture said that the Lord told Moses, lay your hands on Joshua. Uh, because I want you to lay your hands so that the people can see this is the one that will lead if something happens to you. Every now and again, brothers and sisters, God will always raise up somebody if somebody else is not going to complete the job. Look at somebody and say, he'll raise up somebody. He'll He'll raise up somebody. And the Bible says that now in Deuteronomy at the end of chapter number 34, that now God takes Moses away. And the Bible says that when the leader died, I know they probably thought in their mind that now we're not going to get to the land because Moses is gone. But somebody holler Joshua. Joshua was there and the Bible said that the Lord spoke to Joshua in chapter 1. He says, my servant Moses is there, but I want you to take these people to the land that I promised them. First lady, I just came to tell Kingdom Life that just because there was a transition, don't mean the same power didn't go with you. Just because you moved from one place to Patterson, the same power that was given to you over there is the same power you got in Patterson. Look at somebody say there's power in Patterson. Brothers and sisters, as I hasten to my clothes, the Bible says that now, he says, I want you to be strong and very courageous. And the favorite part of the text that I like, he tells Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. He says, anybody in here tonight that can say the Lord is with me. It don't matter where I the Lord is with me. I dare somebody to shout it. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with me, brothers and sisters. As they go down to chapter 2, they end up going through some challenges, but they're en route to their destined place. And while en route to the destined place, around chapter 3 and chapter 4, chapter 4, the Bible talks about they go through the Jordan and they take small, smooth stones and they take them with them as they're traveling. The reason why when you study, you find is every now and again God needs you to bring back some memorabilia of some of us what I would like to call some souvenirs from where you have been and when it seems like you're not going nowhere remember where he brought you from I dare to look at somebody and say remember where he brought you from I know it may not seem like much but when you look back over your life and begin to think things over say that I've been blessed and I got a testimony. Give somebody a high five for the second time and say we're on our way somewhere. 
Brothers and sisters, chapter 5. And the verses that I read in verses 13 to 15. They are encamped at a certain place. And while in route to the place where God wants them, the promised land, there is a city. A city called Jericho. The walls are so thick. But the only reason why they made it like that was because they were scared of the Israelites. I don't know about y'all, but that's some powerful people. When other folk are building their walls around their city because they're scared of what you're going to bring in. But if the God that I serve can split water for Moses, then I know he's God to split rock for Joshua. And I can't even tell you, Pastor, that one year later the promise still stands. Everything that God said about kingdom life, it's got to come to pass. The Bible says that now there is looking in the text that now Joshua is a man standing with his armor or rather his sword drawn. And Joshua wants to know, are you with us or are you with our adversaries? When I studied the text, the scripture said that the man made it clear, I'm not, I'm, I'm either neither, I'm not for your adversaries and I'm not really here to fight for you, but I got a message from the Lord. And the message is something similar to what he told Moses. Take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground. Every now and again, brothers and sisters, you got to know where your feet are planted. You got to make sure that where your feet are. And upon this rock, I'll build my church at the gates of hell. Shall not prevail against it. I feel like preacher. Will you grab some? Don't be scared. There's more with you than it is against you. Somebody holler, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bible says, he tells him to take off his shoes. For where he stands is holy ground. And now we're here at chapter number six. That after speaking to the angel, there's some courage more given to Joshua. He's overlooking Jericho. And while looking at it, the word says that now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. But, brothers and sisters, there's a harlot in there. And the harlot has hid some spies. Every now and again, God knows how to make a connection with people in the city. And what he did was, he said, listen. She said, we're coming. They said, we're coming to destroy Jericho. She said, but when you come, do not destroy or kill me. But what she did was, my God, I feel like preaching. She put a rope that was red. And she hung it out the window. And the Bible says that when they saw the red rope, they knew that's where she was. It's amazing that at one point in the scripture, with Moses, they had to put blood on the doorposts. But now with Joshua, they didn't need the blood on the doorposts. They just needed a red rope. window because God's gonna see the blood out the window when you look at somebody and say neighbor I know you're used to it on the wall but every now and again God has sent somebody to put some rope out the window and the Bible said they said none went out and none came in but God had already infiltrated the city and the Bible said the Lord said unto Joshua, he said, see, come. It is amazing, my sister, that what God had to make Joshua see, that before you see it in the natural, you've got to see it in the spirit. And I came to tell y'all tonight at Kingdom Life that even 
after one year, you still got to see what God saw. And I know it don't seem like it's working, but all things work together for the good of them that love God. And the call, according to his purpose, I gave a look at somebody and said, neighbor, we're on our way to greater, but you got to see it. In the natural or spirit before you see it in the natural it reminded me of a scripture that said there was a prophet by the name of Elijah who went to the top of a hill he said I hear the sound of an abundance of rain and it's so crazy because although he heard it he did not see it he sent the servant to go to the mountain and when he went to the mountain the bible said that the servant said i see nothing he said go back again he went the second third and fourth i see nothing fifth six but on the seventh time he said i see a little cloud the size of a man's head will you lean on somebody I know you don't see it in the natural, but it's about to happen in the spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Through the pulling down a stronghold. Grab somebody. I feel like pushing. see it in the spirit before it happens in the natural you gotta see the pews feel in the spirit before you see it in the natural see the cars double park before they show up outside look at somebody and say neighbor see it in the spirit clap your hands and shout hallelujah says verse number two see I have given into thine hand Jericho he lists Jericho because Jericho is the representation my brother of what's between me and my destiny and there's some things that are in between that have got to go down first lady I won't get there if Jericho is still standing so some things feel gotta die and today is the day the Lord makes it clear that I'm getting ready to give you the city and I only came the night come on Christian let's ride I only came the Patterson on the first service of the first church anniversary come on brother drama add a little bit to it I only came to tell you that the Lord wants to give you the city but before you give the city you gotta see it in the spirit not only you gotta see it in the spirit but you gotta receive what the Lord said God can talk as much as he wants but if you don't receive it it won't come to pass but I came the honor from a church that said something like this I believe it I receive it and that settles it I know that the Lord is still able to do it seemingly I'll give you the governor, and I'll 
Say, take the city by force. For the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Violent, take it by force. For you are not by yourself. The Lord is with you. I was watching the Bible series a few months ago, and one of my favorite parts, my sister, of that movie is when Joshua lifts up his sword and says, the Lord is with us, Israel. And as soon as they shouted that, they went charging into the city. They took everything and they killed everything that needed to be killed. But your assignment, even in your one year anniversary, don't forget what he promised you. If he said you can have it, you can have it. Is already yours. Take the city by force. So I only came. I literally, I'm trying to say this to you, Pastor, wow. and you probably understand it. Had no idea what I was preaching today. No idea. I got up this morning. I said, Now, Lord, what you gonna say? While I was sweeping my floor. He ain't say nothing. I sat on the couch. Lord, what you gonna say? He 
He ain't say nothing. Got dressed, didn't say nothing. Until my staff pulled up to the house and we were watching a movie. And the Holy Ghost said, Joshua 5. I said, hmm. We were watching the movie while I was looking at the text and watching the movie. Yes, sir. Got dressed fully and he said, you tell pastor and the people to take the city by force. He said, make it clear to them, I've already given it to them. All they got to do is follow my instructions and do what they said in their thing. Take over. At this very juncture, let me share this and I'm done. One of the things I've learned about church anniversary is that when the first year comes, you already started working on the second year. Because the first year is over. Now we got to look forward to the second year. If God did all of this for you in the first, what can he do in the second? What can he do in the third, in the fourth, in the fifth? Every year it should be better and better. On your assignment, on your outreach day, make sure you take the force of God with you. Claim the city. People will need your prayers and your support. And one thing, I, I like small churches. Big churches are nice, but I like small churches. Because they're so personable. You can touch and shake hands with people. In the big church, you just give them a wave and keep them moving. But in this space that God has granted unto you, God has already given you what you need to keep the fire burning. Continue to go forward to do what God has requested you to do. For there is no good thing when you would hold from them that walk up right before you. Happy first church anniversary. Yeah. Keep the light. this house is, I pray that you will make it available and possible for it to happen. Bless these nine people as they continue to work alongside the men of God to do what you have called them to do. And we will forever give you praise, honor, and glory for it. In Jesus' name we do pray. And every person said, Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands for us. Hallelujah, all the sin, sick and weary, come on in, come on.